Hey, how you doing? Joshua here with I Cut Grass. Happy Easter. It's uh, April the 1st, um, 2018, and uh, here in central Indiana, we're not mowing yet. Initially, they were talking about, you know, uh, maybe a warm month of March, and it's been anything but that. It's been cold, as a matter of fact. Hey, the reason I'm creating this video today is somebody messaged me recently um, and asked about how do I handle customers when they call about setting up the frequency of the mowing. So I'm going to share with you what I do for me. Maybe you can adopt it in some ways, fully or partly, into your business. Maybe it's not anything you want to do, but at the very least, it will give you another perspective. Possibly you haven't heard of some of the things that I will bring up. And as I tell everybody, you know, your business is your business. You get to do what you want to do. You're the shot caller. Um, so, you know, you, you put together what you want to use based on your experience and talk with other guys that are doing this and find out what they have done. Uh, and that, that's how you learn. That's how you get better. Okay. So, um, when, I, when, I, when somebody calls me for lawn care and they say, hey, I'm looking for an estimate for lawn mowing. I take a look at the property. I don't care what anybody else charges or, or you know, how they make money or what they charge. I look at how long it's going to take me to mow the grass, you know, and then I create it, you know, I put it into the route and see what kind of time is involved in driving. But I always tell my customers, our service is a weekly service. It's a weekly service. It's a not a bi-weekly service, okay? And what we do is we make a commitment for the entire season to mow the lawn for that customer. So that means I'm going to be equipped. I'm going to be staffed. I'm going to be insured. We're going to be ready to go. Vacation time comes up. Guess what? We don't go on vacation during the commitment time or period, which is the normal season. Um, so I tell my customers, my service is a weekly charge. Let's say it's $40. Every week, we're going to bill them $40, whether or not we cut the grass. Now, we're not going to skip the lawn mowing unless they ask us to. Um, but if they ask us to skip the mowing because they have a contract or whatever, that's perfectly fine. But they, we are still expecting to be paid for it, just the same as they are expecting us to mow the lawn all season. Now, some of you guys might be thinking, gee, that's kind of rough. You want them to pay you when you haven't done work. Again, let me repeat, we have made a commitment to that customer. And we have turned down other customers in that spot for that position in my route so we can service the customer. It's no different than, you know, living in the 1980s and a big factory calling you and saying, hey, we need you to work. We're going to give you insurance and we're going to pay you $55,000 a year. But here's the thing. Any day that we call and tell you not to come in, you don't come in and work. Oh, and by the way, we're not going to pay you that day. It doesn't work, okay? A business has to have consistent income. It's no different than when somebody signs up for cable. They can't, You can't call your cable provider and say, hey, I was on vacation last week for four days. I didn't watch any cable, so I don't want to pay the bill. You still have to pay the bill, just like, you know, uh, a lease you might have on an apartment or a home. Hey, I didn't sleep there three nights last week. It doesn't matter. The home was available for you. Now, I'll get some people that call and when they're, when they're talking to me about the um, service that I have, uh, I'll quote them, let's say again, $40 and they say, okay, cut it every two weeks. And I'll say, well, we don't have biweekly service. I mean, if you really want to cut every two weeks, you know, we probably could do that. You're looking at about $95. Wait a minute, Josh, you just told me it was 40 bucks. That's for regular weekly service. The reality of the matter is most commercial lawnmowers are really only designed to cut off one to two inches of grass per pass. Okay, it's not worth it to me as a contractor to tear up my equipment for 40 bucks. Not to mention the fact that you don't know what's in the lawn. There could be bunnies in there, uh, and that's always going to be a possibility. Um, there could be uh, tools, rocks. You have no clue. And this is no joke. I remember when I first got started, my first year, someone called me. It was the bottom of May. Yeah, I need someone to cut my grass. I quote them over the phone, stupid on my part. I get there. They hadn't cut the grass all year. It's up past my knees. I make one pass into the lawn, and as I'm making the pass, I look down, and there's a cat laying in the next pass looking up to me. And about two feet ahead of the cat is um, a, a partially empty, it was like a fifth of whiskey or something. That crap's not worth it. It's just not worth it. It's, it's a mess. The service has got to be weekly. Now, it doesn't matter, that doesn't mean that if I get a new customer and I bring them on, that, you know, I'm not going to cut the lawn for them since it hasn't been cut, but. I'm going to charge them appropriately for that initial mow. If it hasn't been mowed for six weeks, it's 40 times six. 
That's what it is. And then each subsequent mowing is $40. Now, that's how I do my business. You can do what you want. If you want to do biweekly service, that's your business. And some guys are going to get on here and say, well, I've been doing that all the time. I've been in business and it don't hurt my mower. But yes, it does. It's a matter of time. Your mower, when you use it under the ideal conditions that what it was manufactured for, is only going to last X number of hours. It's eventually going to give out. So for me... I'm not interested in giving anybody a freebie, so to speak. Now, yes, there may be times where someone's wife or husband just passed away and they physically can't mow the grass. Maybe I'll mow it for free for them. Or maybe I'll give them a price break or whatever. But for the general business model, it's a weekly service. People have to pay me and I have to be working in conditions that are realistic. Because the truth of the matter is some of these lawns you get into, you're not really mowing. I mean, it needs to be bush hogged. Uh, but... Um, Anyway, that gives you an idea of how I do my mowing. Now, sometimes um, I will uh, uh, give the customer an estimate for the entire season. This is what it costs, okay? Our service is mostly weekly, with the exception of the deep part of the summer, where if the grass is, the growth is stunted, maybe we'll go to a 10 or 14 day schedule. But in the springtime, when we're in the rain season, if I have to double mow it, we double mow it. There's no charge. Um, and, and so here's what the cost is, you know, $1,300 for the season. Um, I don't like to invoice my customers monthly after the fact, because a lot of people won't pay the bill. And essentially what you're doing is you're financing lawn care for people. And then you have a decision six months down the road. Do you sue that individual for two or 300 bucks? You know, and then possibly deal with the, the potential consequences in the public eye for doing that. And there was a local company that did this the last couple of years and they got a black eye from it, uh, but they still do it. So people are kind of getting, they're catching on to how they do things and they're not giving that particular company as much business as they were before, but the guy is still doing outstanding. Uh, it's not a, a business model that I want to follow. There are times where I'll write off debt um, and just take it as a loss, but that's because I, that's for me, not necessarily for them, but you know, I don't want to, when my life is over, I don't want to, you know, have to answer for chasing someone who was strapped and, and couldn't pay their bill. Um, I just let it go and it saves me the stress. Now, um, so you can have your customers pay you monthly in advance. You can have your customers pay you each week, which is a pain in the butt because you got to take the check or you got to take the cash. Um, but you're paid, you know, as you do the work, um, uh, or the alternative is you you know secure a credit card from them and you run that. You show up to mow the grass. When you get there, you run the card. It doesn't go through. You don't mow the grass. You wait till next week or you call them and say, hey, we came by to mow. Your car didn't work. We'll be by next week. It'll be a double mowing and we'll try to run it then. Um, but long story short, guys, I got myself in a position where I had been invoicing customers monthly at the end of each month. And so I've got four weeks of mowing in most cases built up. Um, all my money's tied up on paper. I don't have any physical money. I am, I have got money on paper and they pay their bills. And it's usually two or three more weeks after I send out the invoice, even if it's via email, some of them send their payments in right away. Uh, but not all of them. So you are not a bank. It is not your responsibility to finance the long care for the customers. I don't care what anybody else does. And then we come across the situation where do you have an executed contract for a customer or do you have a handshake? Understand that a handshake agreement technically can be upheld in court, but it's really hard to prove anything that you're saying. Okay, It's really hard to prove. Um, anybody that um, is, wants to do business with you know, a contractor and is legitimate shouldn't have a problem signing a contract with you. And if they don't want to sign a contract, then maybe you don't want to do work with them. Let me use a brief example. I had a guy in Carmel, Indiana call me up, and he had been uh, a Wendy's franchisee. Um, he was very financially wealthy, and he wanted me to do lawn care for him, uh, but he didn't want to sign a contract, and he created all these arguments for it, and I didn't want to argue with him when he set up, so I said, fine. We did a bunch of work. It didn't last that long. Uh, the guy was kind of a jack wagon, um, and I mean, he was always calling me for stupid stuff, and he would want to talk and talk and talk when I would show up to his property. So I started billing him on the jobs. Come out and talk to me for two and a half hours while I'm working. That's fine, but it's still my time. I'm not there to be your friend. And I know that sounds kind of crappy. I didn't say that to them, but you get the idea. Your time is worth money. 
Again, your business, you can do what you want. But um, I would encourage you to have your written agreements together in paper, have them sign that, and just tell them, hey, this is this will serve as a point of reference for us uh, moving forward. Um, and so when I create my agreements, you know, I list the charge, the services that we're doing, you know, because sometimes they would call me and be like, hey, you haven't cut the bushes. Well, we didn't, we never agreed to cut the bushes. Now I can do that for you. That's an additional charge. What are you talking about? I hired you. You're supposed to do this. If you've got that agreement, okay, that details what you're going to be doing, you don't find yourself in that situation. And there are people out there like that. And I don't know, I wouldn't go so far to say that all of them do that intentionally to try to take advantage of you. Um, but um, uh, some of them will legitimately forget, but there are a lot of people that will, that will try to get out or get passed on you. And every year I have people that don't want to pay their invoice and they don't pay their invoice for two months. We stopped mowing their lawn and they immediately call me and say, well, you guys didn't cut my grass. Well, gee, really? You didn't pay your bill for the last two months. Oh, I didn't know I'd get an invoice. Yes, you got an invoice. You know you get an invoice every month. We've been mowing your grass for six years. All right, let's just cut the crap. QuickBooks shows me that you open it up at 930 on the 21st. You know, so, you know, let, let's cut the baloney. Anyway, guys, the the goal here is for you, whatever you do when you outline to a customer how your service is set up for your mowing, you know, that you get good, you practice, maybe talk in front of a mirror, I'm not joking, and you get good at presenting your um, position, and then you get good at overcoming objections. That's what sales are. And you don't have to do it with aggressive, you know, uh, responses, but, you know, you have to have, or if they come back and say, well, I have to talk with my wife, hey, that's fine. I understand. I can't tell you that tomorrow morning I'm going to still have a spot available because I'm getting a lot of phone calls. If I have it, I'll be happy you know, to add you and then we can throw you into the rotation next week because I won't be here tomorrow. Um, little things like that. They still may say, okay, we'll wait, you know, uh, and I don't get back with you. And that's perfectly fine. I don't have high pressure sales, but there are just ways to overcome objections that are very calm in nature that can get you to get the business. And another thing too, I get people that call me all the time and say, yeah, well, your quote is 40 bucks. My neighbor's only 25. Can you match it? No. And, and I'll tell you exactly what I say when I get that, those calls, but I can do it for $55. And I say, wait a minute, you just said 40. I did. And you undercut me by $15. I told you what I was willing to do it for. And then you undercut it. So now I'm telling you what I'm now willing to do it for. That's actually kind of an inside of a joke. I will use it if someone aggravates me. Um, most times I don't, but uh, you got to be firm and don't be afraid to tell somebody no. Oh, I'm going to call somebody else. Okay, that's great. I appreciate your time. A lot of times that happens to me and they call me back a couple hours later or a week later and they hire me. Um, or, hey, we hired this guy, this, you know, this high school kid and he hasn't shown up and I don't have anything against high, high school kids cutting grass because I was that guy once, right? I'm 41 now. That was a long time ago, but I was that guy once, okay? And I was out there trying to get stuff done. I wanted to do Jordan shoes when I was younger or an Indiana Hoosiers, you know, floor mats for my car, whatever it was, you know? And there's nothing wrong with young men wanting to do work, but the reality is, is they're not insured in most cases. Um, and you don't know if they're going to show up Friday to cut your grass because if it's summer break and this pretty girl wants to go to the pool with them, maybe they're going to go to the pool, right? Again, you know, not not all of them, but anyway, um, you know, create create a um, a business model and stick to it. Um, I don't like to take cash from customers; it's too much of a liability. But there are times where I take cash from them, put it in my pocket. I know I got to go to the bank. Hey guys, I I hope this is helpful for you. Um, you know, maybe you could subscribe to my page if you haven't already. I don't get anything from anybody for doing this for you guys. I just want to help and get you to think. And like I said, maybe my way isn't the way for you, and that's perfectly fine. But maybe it will get you to think about how you can do things a little bit differently, and hopefully help you to um, you know achieve more success. Thanks for watching. I'll uh, catch up with you again sometime soon in a new video.